This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Important and noteworthy events are taking place in Russia and in China. Events which are of significance in the light of biblical prophecy. Beginning with events in Russia and Vladimir Putin's re-election, Deutsche Welle published an article titled Vladimir Putin's Great Deceit. They wrote on March 18, it is no surprise that Vladimir Putin was re-elected as Russian president for six more years. The outcome of this bogus election was preordained. Now they will be talking about in physical terms, but I thought the term preordained is quite interesting, perhaps also in light of other influences. The article goes on to say the Kremlin controls every aspect of the political process in Russia and it didn't leave anything to chance during this electoral spectacle. Many Russians undoubtedly voted for him. He is clearly popular with the public. The president's power rests not only on state repression, but also on the media's portrayal of him as Russia's only conceivable leader. Many in the West fear Russia's unpredictable and aggressive stance on the international stage. Putin is prepared to further escalate confrontation with the West. Putin will not change his course. And in light of this rather biting article, here is an article by Handelsblatt Global, which was published on March 21, saying this. Germany's new foreign minister, Heiko Maas, has indicated a tougher line against the Russian bear. Mrs. Merkel is unlikely to shift her line. Those who set the tone in her government do not trust Mr. Putin and see his expensive foreign policy as a threat to the European security architecture. Russia intervenes in neighboring countries, launching cyber attacks in Europe and the United States. And in Syria, it is waging a merciless bombing war against the opponents of dictator Bashar al-Assad. And in light of this, the question is still being debated as to whether or not Mr. Putin should have been congratulated for his election, quote-unquote, victory. And so The Week wrote on March 21 that President Trump defended his decision to congratulate Russian President Vladimir Putin on his re-election earlier this week. The Washington Post had reported that Trump was warned by national security advisors not to congratulate Putin, and aides told the president he needed to condemn the poisoning of former Russian spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter Julia in England earlier this month, widely blamed on Moscow. Trump didn't bring this up, the Post reports. Now, in all fairness, most leaders, including of the Western world, congratulated Vladimir Putin, and so did Angela Merkel, and so did one of the first ones, the German president. Nevertheless, the argument which some have advanced that, of course, Obama also congratulated Putin was different in that the situation at that time was not the same is a very weak one because the situation regarding Vladimir Putin was always the same. Vladimir Putin has always been the former KGB spy, a ruthless person who did not stay away from murdering his opponents. And so Build Online commented a few days after Putin's re-election that only a very few leaders did not congratulate him, amongst whom was Theresa May from England and Justin Trudeau from Canada. And then Build Online continued congratulating those two leaders for their courage, for their backbone, and for their strength of character. Now, in addition to Russia, another important country we should take note of is China. 
And so CNN wrote on March 20 that China is ready to fight a quote-unquote bloody battle against its enemies in its determination to take its place in the world, declared President Xi Jinping in a nationalist speech. China's reach is extending further than ever before, and the United States is taking a back seat. Xi harkened back to the country's imperial past, which critics have accused him of seeking to emulate as an emperor-like figure. He had strong language for supporters of formal independence for Taiwan or Hong Kong, saying that not a single inch of our land could be ceded from China. Beijing regards the island as a breakaway province to be retaken by force if necessary. Now there is fear that a war will break out between, let's say, the United States of America and Russia and or China. Now in particular in regards to the potential trade war which might or might not happen. But the Bible, my friends, doesn't tell us that prior to Christ's return a major war will break out between the United States on the one hand and Russia or China on the other. However, the Bible does tell us that a nuclear war will break out between Russia and China on the one hand and other nations called in the Bible the kings of the East and continental Europe, a nuclear war with devastating consequences. And I hasten to add that it is Europe which will launch what they will call a preemptive strike against those nations, but the retaliation will be terrible, will be awful. And the Bible also tells us that just after Christ's return, those surviving nations of the Far East will try to launch a military attack on survivors in the United States of America and Great Britain, who by that time will have been sent to another place to live. But God will intervene and stop this war from taking place. Nevertheless, we find the desire to do just that. And by the way, the book of Ezekiel talks about these events and says that the Far Eastern nations will be led by a military leader from China. You might call him an emperor. We all have ideas as to what may happen, but the Bible tells us exactly as to what is going to happen. And we have prepared a booklet, Biblical Prophecy from Now Until Forever, which describes these events which I'm talking about today and what will lead to not only the most devastating period in the history of mankind called the Great Tribulation, but also the return of Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, my friends, these events are not that far off as most people might realize or think. They are much closer, and you need this free booklet to tell you exactly as to what is happening and why. So thank you very much for listening. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.